Plumbus extinguishers be recharged immediately after use, even if only partially discharged. Well, a real reason for having a, an extinguisher recharged as quickly as possible is probably because the state fire code demands it. NFPA 10 6.1.2 makes that very, very clear. It's important, though, to understand how this standard benefits our company. We can demonstrate on a very small scale with a Class A, in this case a cardboard and wood fire, out of the picnic area. We'll use a small, a very small extinguisher to put it out. We execute the acronym PASS. P stands for Pull the Pin. The seal breaks away easily. We stand at the proper distance from the fire. We A, aim at the base of the fire. We S, squeeze. And we will sweep if necessary, but a couple of small blasts and the fire appears extinguished. We stand by with the extinguisher in hand in case the fuel reignites. Notice we have plenty of pressure left. The gauge needle is still well within the green. Whoops. Reignition. So we again station ourselves at the correct distance and we aim at the base. Two more short bursts and it's out. But look at this. We still have plenty of pressure. The needle's on the border of the green. We have enough pressure and extinguishing agent to put out several more small fires. So we sneak the unit back into service, placing it on the wall hanger without having it recharged. What if there was a fire so that we needed the extinguisher the next day? Would it work? On well, the very next day I tried discharging it again. Remember, no one has done anything with or to this unit since you saw me discharging it yesterday. It's not working. What if this was an actual emergency? Why is it not performing correctly? When we look at the gauge, it shows zero PSI, no pressure. But how can that be? Just 24 hours ago, we saw the pressure reading was on the line, almost in the green. Let's go back into the shop and see what we can find out. To explain, allow me a short description of how a normal store pressure fire extinguisher works. The valve stem this is the valve stem. Can you, can you see how that looks? It's, it's metal with a uh, couple rubber rings there. The valve stem fits into the valve body. Now it fits snugly in there and if it fits properly then it seals in the agent and the pressurized gas into that extinguisher. Then when we push down on that handle, we're really squeezing the lever down to the handle and it's pressing that valve down and that's allowing the extinguishing agent then to escape from the extinguisher. Now let's look at that extinguisher that was used recently but not recharged. As we take it apart, I would like for you to notice that powdery chemical is falling out. It's falling out of the uh, valve body from the very front there, from the nozzle. Then as we take it apart, I expect to see the uh, dry chemical agent coming out of this tube a little bit. I don't know if you can see it there or not, but it was still falling out of that tube pretty, pretty much as I was pulling it out. And now we're going to continue taking this apart. And well, as I take it apart, you can really see that, that falling out. That's the residue from the chemical agent that was left up in that valve body. Now there's the, the valve body itself. You can see all the chemical agent that's falling out. And now we're going to pull out that valve that we were looking at a moment ago in a cleaner environment. And there it is. Can you see that? Look at all the powder, the residue, residue that's left on that valve stem. And I expect that there's a lot up in that valve body too, the valve seat. 
Now, this is what it looks like after just a little bit of use. It was just a, a couple spurts there, remember, or just a few spurts. This is what it looks like. This is a new one. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is what it does look like. Wow, that's really got a lot of powder on it when you think about it. What it should look like, what it does look like. Okay, enough. What we want to, to remember here is that the dry chemical residue on that valve even if we've only discharged it a little bit, there's enough powdery extinguishing agent that's remaining on that valve to prevent it from sealing properly. The dry gas expellent, in this case dry nitrogen, will leak out because the valve can no longer seal it. And that's just what happened to this one. The pressure is going to drop down where it can no longer force the extinguishing agent out the nozzle or hose. And then, in a real work environment, when the unit's needed again, probably for a real emergency, it's most likely not going to perform properly. Of course, this could cause great property loss or even worse. This makes it very important to have our extinguishers recharged as quickly as possible.